Well, joining us now for more on the impact of coronavirus on our food supplies, Maximo, Maximo Torero is the chief economist at the Food and Agriculture Organization of the United Nations. Uh, great to have you on. Uh, when we talk about the so-called farm-to-fork system, I mean, you see these meatpacking plants hugely impacted uh, uh, despite being ordered to stay open. Farmers dumping produce, we see that around the world. In general, how fragile or exposed to potential failure is the system? So, thank you very much. It's a pleasure to be here. Uh, the, the system has shown some problems in terms of the logistical side. Uh, what is important today is that the, in the staple world, in the cereal world, so maize, wheat, corn and rice, we have sufficient stocks and we have a very good harvest this year. The only initial problem was some logistical issues which are being resolved. So the staple world is operating now properly. Even the last export restriction that was important, the rice export quota that was put by Vietnam has been released. So the price of rice will start to fall. Uh, what you're referring, I think, mostly to the high value world, which is fruits, vegetables, meat, uh, milk. In those areas, uh, we have two big problems. One is labor. They are labor intensive in difference to the staple, which is capital intensive. And the labor has been restricted because of the lockdowns, but also has been restricted because of health issues. And the second one is the logistical part, because these are perishable, so it's more difficult uh, for them to, to maintain their quality if they have delays in transportation. That's exactly what is happening. Uh, our position was that we need to reopen those value chains, but of course, taking care of the health issues. What you are observing in the meat sector in, in the U.S. is because of, of significant numbers of people testing positive, uh, which creates a problem. So. It's okay to open them, but you have to be very careful in testing, in physical distance, in using masks and using gloves uh, to protect uh, the employees in every sector. And that's, right. that's crucial in the high-value commodity. What, what, what has coronavirus um, exposed about the current global food chain system that needs to change in a post-COVID world? It, it has shown that it's vulnerable uh, to logistical issues, uh, especially what we have observed, like for example, if you look to a, a processing plant uh, of any high value food commodity, uh, people are working too close to each other. And what needs to change now logistically is that we need to have physical distance. It has also shown that the crucial part of the transportation, uh, uh, specifically in the high value end commodities like top meat, top, top meat uh, and fish, the lockdown of the airport and the, and the cargo through airlines uh, has created a significant problem. So again, it has helped us to understand what are our vulnerabilities uh, and where we need to try to think carefully in the future to avoid them to happen again. It, it, in, in the US, I mean, some of the issues, uh, well, at, at, you know, they, they might be inconvenient or, or th some things might run out at grocery stores. In other countries, it, it's more critical. I mean, is it, is it alarmist to talk of, you know, potential hunger or, or social upheaval over food? Are those things possible? Of course. So what is important to understand is that the problem is not a problem of food availability. As you have seen, there is a lot of food that cannot be moved uh, and meals being thrown to the rivers, for example. Uh, the problem is of food access, and that's the major concern. What we are facing in the next months, 12 months or even more, is a significant recession. And that means uh, incapacity of, of households of having the income to be able to procure the food. And that's the concern. It's a concern of food access. And this could affect significantly countries that have been significantly choked uh, because they are primary net exporters. For example, the oil choke has affected significant many countries in Africa, like Nigeria, Chad, Libya, uh, and Algeria. Uh, also, the cotton exports are being significantly reduced. And these countries export mostly to Northern Europe, to Europe, and to the U.S. and to China. So if those countries go into recession, the revenue that a, country, a continent like Africa will have reduces significantly. And these are continents which are dependent on food. And they are import net dependent, so they need the revenue. Even worse, if you look at the CIPs, the small island development states, those are countries that depend on tourism, which basically has completely collapsed. They depend on remittances, which have been reduced around 20 to 25 percent. They are net food importing, and they are also very vulnerable to climatic shocks. So they are facing the worst of this situation, and those are the countries that we are concerned that there could be an increase on hunger and severe uh, situations of, of, of hunger. Maximo Torero, thank you so much. Appreciate you coming on. It's an important issue. Thank you. A pleasure.